Here's my tech talk and beyond for the week ending October 4th, 2024. This week's topic is your smartphone spying on you. How to take back control. Ever had that creepy feeling when your phone shows you an ad for something you just thought about buying? You didn't search it, didn't say it out loud, yet there it is, staring back at you from your screen. What if I told you your smartphone might be tracking more about you than you ever imagined? Stick around because in the next few minutes, we're going to uncover the truth about how much your phone actually knows about you, how it's collecting your data, and more importantly, how you can stop it in its tracks. We carry our smartphones everywhere. They're practically glued to us. But while they keep us connected to the world, they're also constantly collecting information in the background. From location data to browsing habits, apps and services are quietly siphoning off your personal data and sending it to, well, who knows where. And what does that mean for your privacy? Well, the short answer is it's disappearing. You might think, I have nothing to hide. But do you really want companies, or worse, hackers, knowing where you are, what you like, and who you talk to? Let's dig into what's happening under the hood and what you can do to fight back. Here's the kicker. Your smartphone is always listening, watching, and tracking. Let's break down some of the ways it's gathering information. Location tracking. Your phone constantly knows where you are, even when you're not using GPS. Apps collect this data to provide location-based services, but they also sell it to advertisers. Suddenly, your trip to the coffee shop isn't just your business. It's theirs, too. Microphone access. Ever get the feeling your phone is eavesdropping on your conversations? Well, apps with microphone access can listen in on what you say, even if you're not actively using the app. Yes, they claim it's to improve your experience. But you have to wonder, improve whose experience? App permissions. Most apps request a laundry list of permissions when you install them. Do they really need access to your contacts, camera, and messages? Nope, but they want it, and once you grant that access, they have free reign to gather all sorts of personal data. Background data. Even when you're not using an app, it can still be active in the background, collecting data. It's like a spy in your pocket, silently taking notes on your activity. Wi-Fi tracking. Ever notice how your phone automatically connects to public Wi-Fi networks you've used before? This convenience comes at a price. Your phone is constantly scanning for Wi-Fi networks, which can be used to track your location and even your movements from store to store in a shopping mall. Bluetooth beacons. You might not even know they exist, but Bluetooth beacons are all around us. These small devices can communicate with your smartphone when Bluetooth is enabled, tracking your location and interactions. Retailers use them to know which aisle you're in and even push specific ads based on where you are in the store. Gyroscope and accelerometer. Bet you didn't know your phone's gyroscope and accelerometer the sensors that track motion can be used to spy on you. Some apps can collect this data to infer your movements, like how often you pick up your phone, where you're walking, or even how fast you're driving. Third-party data sharing. When you install an app, you're not just sharing your data with that app developer. Any apps sell your data to third parties, advertisers, data brokers, and who knows who else. So when you're using that free app, it's likely profiting off your personal information. Keyboard tracking. 
Some apps have been known to log what you type, including sensitive information like passwords and credit card numbers. Even if this data is anonymized, it's still unsettling to think about the level of access some apps have. Ad trackers. Even if you've turned off personalized ads, there's no guarantee that ad trackers aren't still following you around the web. These trackers log your browsing habits, app usage, and even how long you stay on a particular page, all to build a profile about you. Taking back control, steps to protect your privacy. Now that you know how your smartphone might be spying on you, it's time to fight back. Limit app permissions. Don't let apps have more access than they need. Go into your phone settings and review what each app is allowed to do. Don't be afraid to deny access to your microphone, camera, or location if it's not absolutely necessary. Turn off location services. Sure, it's convenient to let your phone know where you are, but do you really need every app knowing your exact location 24-7? Turn off location services for apps that don't need it. You can always toggle it on when you actually need it. Use a VPN. A virtual private network can help protect your browsing data by masking your IP address and encrypting your internet traffic. It's an easy way to add a layer of security to your online activity and keep prying eyes out. Disable background app refresh. If an app doesn't need to be active when you're not using it, turn off background refresh. This limits the app's ability to collect data while it's in the background, and it'll also save your battery life. Win-win. Turn off always-on listening features. Voice assistants like Siri, Mr. G, and Miss A are convenient, but they're also always listening. If you don't want your phone listening to your every word, disable the Hey S and OK G features. Update your software regularly. Hackers love exploiting outdated software. Keeping your phone's operating system and apps up to date ensures you have the latest security patches and bug fixes, which makes it harder for anyone to exploit your phone. Use end-to-end -end encryption for messaging. Apps like Signal and WhatsApp offer end-to-end -end encryption, which means only you and the person you're communicating with can see the messages. Not even the app developers can access them, keeping your conversations private. Turn off ad tracking. Many smartphones have an option to limit ad tracking or reset your advertising ID. This won't stop all data collection, but it'll help reduce the amount of data advertisers can use to target you. Use strong passwords and biometrics. Protect your phone itself with a strong password or biometric security, like fingerprint or facial recognition. If your phone is ever lost or stolen, this can prevent someone from accessing your personal data. What about those ads that feel like they're reading your mind? Yes, the ads that pop up right after you think about buying something. This isn't magic. It's called predictive analytics. Apps send services collect so much data about you, your browsing habits, your location, your past purchases, that they can often predict what you might want next. It's not that your phone is literally reading your mind. It's just gathering so much data that it feels like it. But still, it's unsettling, right? To combat this, disable personalized ads in your phone's settings. It won't completely eliminate the tracking, but it'll cut down on the creepy factor. Conclusion. Your phone, your rules. At the end of the day, your smartphone should work for you, not spy on you. Taking a few simple steps can drastically improve your privacy and give you back control over your digital life. Don't wait until it's too late. 
Make these changes now and stop your phone from being your personal spy. You'll find the video used in today's Tech Talk at the link listed. Did you know? When glass cracks, it seems almost instantaneous, thanks to the speed at which glass shatters. Cracks form in glass at a staggering 3,200 meters, or 10,498.69 feet per second. Thomas Edison invented an electric pen in 1876 that was later adapted to become the first tattoo machine in 1891. Cherry trees grown from cherry tree seeds kept aboard the International Space Station for eight months have started blooming years ahead of schedule, and researchers aren't sure why. Just thought you might want to know. Just because they say it's impossible doesn't mean you can't do it, thanks to Roger Bannister. In my humble opinion, to not try at all is even worse. And that's a wrap for this week's Tech Talk and Beyond. Stay safe, stay secure, and I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye, and thanks for reading, watching, and listening.